Hello everyone, this is John for PokerVIP.com and in this video, I can't believe I'm saying this, we're going to be playing the Stan James Fish Party Sit and Goes. No idea who came up with this name, but it is literally what it says on the tin. It's a fish party. It is basically their take on spin and goes, or jackpots, or twisters, or whatever you've seen across the other sites. Probably the most recognisable is a poker star spin and go, and it's the same. You buy in, you play uh, three-handed, it is generally winner takes all, and yeah, you just play and win a hyper turbo sit and go. Um, the difference is, if you hit a jackpot, it's actually split between the three um, a bit more evenly, like a regular sit and go would. That just means it's not as heartbreaking. You know, you don't want to get like a 250k one, winner takes all, you get 25k or something like that. It's actually going to be split on a better proportion. Um, it's also a progressive jackpot, so you can win up to 5,000 times your buy in. But then you can also win the progressive jackpot on top, which you can see is just ticking away now in the background. 1 euro, 5 euro, 10 euro, 20 euro, and 50 euro spins available. This, we're going to start off just playing some 1 euro ones, and it's going to be a four part series. We're just going to play one table at a time. Um, is this for recreational players? Yes, absolutely. But can you farm serious amounts of money from it if you're good? Yes. If you're a spin and go grinder, get onto here. If you love winning lots of money quickly, get onto here. This is not just for bad players, but bad players are in the games and you can absolutely clean them out. Obviously with Stan James as well, you're going to get the rake back, you're going to get the rake race, you're going to get the promotions, <clears throat> you're going to get the missions, you're going to get everything. So get signed up, it's on the box to your right or below. Uh, check out the whole rules um, of these fish parties, we've got a forum thread that is linked to in the description below and get signed up but hey we're gonna start playing you know you can see all the informations by the way you know how you're gonna win how many you dealt out whatever how to win uh, but the main thing is you press play and if you press play it will instantly start so you instantly load up a table and here it is the fish party <laughs> I can't believe it's called a fish party so what we're gonna do is we're going to just go ahead and get rid of that and wait for the game to start Okay, so the game starts, we spin the wheel and we land on a double. It's just like a sort of like slot machine. And we're now going to start off just by playing poker. We start with 25 big blinds and one thing to note there is actually an ante in, in these games. So um, unlike the other games where there's no antes I believe, you're going to have to be a bit quicker to start. Ace Jack is obviously a monster when you have 25 big blinds. I'm choosing to 3x the button. We can actually go between min raising and 3xing. Um, it's kind of like a preference thing. You know, these guys are probably all going to be recreationals. They're not going to pick up on sizing. So you can actually play a bit more exploitative and change your sizing per position, per hand, or whatever you really want. I would definitely say to change things up a little bit on this site. Get used to the players and see how they react. Nothing wrong with min raising, nothing wrong with 3xing or even 2.5xing. A7, gonna change up a little bit, just gonna go for a min raise. They folded pretty fast last time, and it's a slightly weaker hand, whatever. Lots of people will hate this strategy of changing, um, sizing up, but I absolutely don't think there's anything wrong with it. Gonna go ahead and just see about this flop. I imagine this guy is going to have either hit this flop pretty hard or missed it totally. Um, so if he's missed it totally, we're gonna get him to fold. And even if those hands that he folds are worse than ace high, that's fine, because he now has no equity once he folds. So even if he has a hand like 8-9, if he has a hand like 8-9 and he folds, that's good for us. He leads the turn here. Pretty confusing. Um, repping a king or a queen or maybe some sort of draw. Um, it is quite a large proportion of our stack to call off. So I'm probably just going to opt on the safe side here and fold. Um, if I had a king, I would just call. If I had a queen, I would just call. And then I'd just basically call any river. Same thing, I would not fold a flush draw there either. Uh, king 10 here, if he raises, I will go all in. Um, there is 76 in the middle. We are risking 437 to risk it. And we have a king and a 10 three-handed. So the whole situation plays out really well for us. He sadly calls, though, with a hand that dominates us. Um, now we just need to avoid a jack or an ace, which we do. We get lucky there, but I think we played that hand absolutely fine. He was definitely the looser player on the table. Like I say, we have a strong hand. There's lots of money to win in the middle. So let's go ahead and just make that play with a very strong hand. Uh, fold blind versus blind there for my junk. Absolutely cool. 6-7 I'm going to fold because it will mean we're probably just going to get it all in with Jin Jones. Um, which is not ideal with 7 high. Um, it's not something you want to be doing too much of. Game start pretty quick. You sit and they're pretty much ready to go just like you know the other sites. These are the 1 euro buy-ins. So we can win you know over 5k. 
or play for over 5k, should I say. Ace time we get a walk with, that's a shame. I would have just basically got in with anyone there. Queen 3 is going to be a fold. Um, don't really like folding blind versus blind too often, but this guy's jammed anyway, so he saves us that embarrassment. So yep, Stan James fish party is pretty awesome. Um, interesting, yeah, I'm going to fold the 810. Just need to play a bit cautiously because this guy in the big blind. If we were like heads up, I would have probably just shipped it proof the 8 bigs. Um, but we have to get through Shakalaka as well from Poland. He jams and gets the fold. Ace 8, um, I will just be basically getting all the money in blind versus blind here. I will be calling or raising. Not ever folding a hand this strong for this amount of big blinds uh, three handed. So, yeah, we call Ace 8. Um, we have the same hand. He has the free roll, sadly. Oh no. Oh no. Whew. Dodge that one. Totally standard though. We're often going to be a good favourite there. Uh, we're definitely going to have his aces dominated sometimes. Uh, blinds are up to 15.30 and he's have got bigger. So, you know, now more reason to start stealing pots. So I'm going to try a min raise here, blind versus blind, my suited hand. Shakalaka has been on the tighter side, so definitely fine to do that. Flop a good shot on the backdoor flush draw, so I'm just going to start off by betting. Somewhere around half pot will be good. Um, we want him to fold, but if he calls, we'll just barrel any sort of like club. Um, obviously, if we then improve to a 7, we'll bet. Or if we're at a 9 or a 5, then we'll probably just check and try and get the hand to showdown. Or maybe value bet river. Um, blinds go up every 3 minutes. So it's more like a turbo rather than a hyper turbo, should I say. Threes, we will just be getting all the money in here. Okay, cool. I'm sure we're flipping. Yep. Now we need just need to avoid an ace or a six or a five or a ten. Yeah, that was always going to be hard to fade. This guy just won't die, <laughs> but that's okay. A6 of diamonds will be an all-in again. I will just shove blind versus blind. Don't really want to raise. Call it off. I also don't want to raise and see a flop out of position too often with it. Would rather just get it all in pre um or get the folds. Six deuce gonna have to muck. God, I love these games. I love the software. I love the way it all looks. You can multi-table. Um, you can play all the different stakes. Queen nine here will be a call. It's pretty close, but it, it's a call. We'll also get an article up with some ranges. Uh, run into Jack King. We just need to provide a king on the river. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Not going well. Not going well. When we get it in good, when we get it in bad, whatever. It's just not working out. King Deuce is pretty close. Um, because he's tight, I'm going to try him in raise. We could think about folding or even limping there. But because he's on the tighter side, I try to raise. Sadly, he jams though. And we bring the stacks back to fairly even across the three of us. So I'm still a slight chip leader. Ace 8 is just an all in. Remember, it's not just for our stack, it's effective sizes. So they have about 14 big blinds each. A8 suit on the button with antis in the middle will be a jam. Hopefully you guys can come over and crush these games. Okay, this guy goes all in. We cannot call with 7 high, even though it is for a low amount of blinds. It would be for the majority of our stack, and our hand can often be crushed. 10 deuce... It's going to be a limp blind versus blind. Hoping he just checks when we see a flop, basically. And we can also mix this up by limping our stronger hands as well. Quite a complex game, but there are lots of ranges, which, like I say, we will have an article created for. I will not be playing perfectly. I'm definitely not a sit-and-go pro. Um, but I have a good feel for the games, and I'm just showing them off. Sadly, we run into ace-queen here. Um, and we're not going to win this one or even get a chop. So we are now the short stacks. Not exactly the ideal start, but certainly not anything um, totally incorrect. going to be a pretty easy call here with 7-9. Um, one thing to note is it doesn't really matter. There is no bubble um, in these. You know, it's winner takes all, so you don't really have to think too much about ICM. 5 or a 10 on the river. Sadly not. And we lose the first one, but we're going to play another. <laughs> We are jumping straight back into the party of fish. Um, so yeah, that first one, um, I don't think any uh, clear mistakes were made. I'm happy with my play overall. Um, the standard of the games, they were okay actually. Um, here we go, we're spinning the wheel, hopefully we'll get a big one. Sadly not, whenever you see this little guy, whenever you see the little worm, it's only going to be a double. Hopefully we're going to run into some big jackpots uh, throughout this four-part series. King 10 here. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and raise and fold if he jams. But 
Uh, King 10, you know, we should definitely get value from his limping range and also just, you know, put him under pressure. You know, we don't want him to just be able to, you know, think he can get freebies, um, post flop, pre uh, you know, see the fault free and, you know, not be put under any pressure. Good, just try him in raising blind versus blind with this suited gap connector. And we do take it down. We'll just put him out with feelers. 8 10, we're going to try a min raise. I was folding 8 10 in the previous video when the guy only had like 100 chips. Um, very different when, you know, it's a starting stack. And they have over 20 big blinds. There is still time still. Seems like I'm on a really tight table. I think I've just won the first four. 6 8. We're going to just try him in raise. Um, it's pretty close. We could also limp this hand. But with these guys folding so often, then we should definitely try and take advantage. Uh, obviously, it's just over a very short sample. Um, but, you know, you can definitely just pick up on things like this so quick and just try. You know, we're, 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 sorry, Christ, we're risking, you know, 40 to win 36, you know, when we've been raised the button. Going to go ahead and appeal here, getting 5 to 1 with um, low connecting cards. Often going to be a bad flop for us, but we are getting a good price there, and everyone is stacked, so we do have the implied odds of winning big pots when we do still hit. And then being multi way is always good. Ten five two is going to be a fault. Do not get into the habit of like calling these min raises, you know, from the small blind, just because you think the big blind is always going to call. You know, hands like this, you know, from the small blind are going to get you into a lot of trouble. Interesting bet there, and the fact that he leads that turn. Maybe think he should be three betting or raising pre with those uh, stronger hands. King four, I'm going to fold. Um, big blind's getting a bit short. It's pretty close that one on the button. Okay, we get a walk. This is good. Very tight players. So yeah, we're going to start opening up a little bit more again. A six um, is going to be a raise. We could also limp jam this hand, but we don't want to limp call it off with this hand. So we could limp, get him to 4 exit, jam, pick up that pot, or just get it in with, you know, an ace. Um, so if we run into, a, you know, anything other than aces, we're going to be at least 30%. But we're also going to be a favorite versus hands like king, queen, and jack, queen, and king, jack. If that did happen. So that would be a nice play as well. Uh, all in, can't call. Blinds to go up pretty, pretty shortly, um, which will leave that guy with about 12 big blinds and us with about 20. King 5 here, just going to try and min raise. Could also just limp and hope he checks and see a flop. But because he is so tight, again, risking 40 to win the pot is a profitable line. Going to try again here with a suited hand. Um, might run into something, but nope. Fold, fold. It almost seems as if this is rigged for the video, but I promise you these players are just playing that, uh, that tight. A fold here. A min raise, which I'm going to peel. We're getting a good price. We have a king. Not a good fault for us. Going to be a fault. Don't like the idea of jamming pre there. Um, don't like the idea of just raising. Folding would be okay. Jack three, we're going to have to fold. That's just way too weak to do anything with, even limping. Binds are good up, so I'm going to actually tighten up slightly now. I think people will be more interested in getting it all in or just raising. Uh, that guy actually forex today, made it 120, which is pretty interesting. He could obviously just jam pre-flop, uh, considering the guy's only got 11 big blinds. He folds again. It's like they're just not folding to me. Um, I am learning this game as we go through it. Yeah, I'm Like I say, I'm not a sit and go pro. I will be ma making mistakes, but the idea is we learn together. And like I say, we will create some um, some good content, um, which actually gives you definitive ranges and what to do's. It'll all be linked in the description below. The main thing here is to just show off these games. Go try and min raise here with Queen 9. Obviously, I'm going to fall to jams or raises. Um, but I think Queen 9 is definitely okay to try a steal with. Sadly, we get jammed on and we have to fold. Queen 10. Pretty interesting here. Um, he calls, he might be trapping, but he could just definitely have a weaker hand that he's going to fold. A 69 in the middle, we have queen high, we block some strong hands, and he is nitty, so I think it shows always going to be best there. He's all in, can't call with king four, but we could certainly jam king four, blind versus blind, or button for that effective set. If that came up, Ace King. I think I'm just gonna try Min Raise. I've not really just been jamming, so it seems strange to do so when I pick up the strongest hand I've had today. Um, he leads. I'm just gonna go ahead and value raise here. You know, he could have a draw. He could have a weak Ace. 
you know, just going to pile on the pressure. Um, could definitely go ahead and just fight call on a drier board. Um, or where we have like a backdoor flusher or something. But when someone can definitely show up with a draw and be happy to get their money in, then we should go ahead and uh, oblige. Um, I'm going to just value bet here around two thirds pot. And we'll not be folding top pair. Don't want to check there. Um, don't want to bet too small, so about two thirds pot will work. Monster handy at nines. Hopefully, some guy just ships it. He does. This is a pretty easy rejam. Should be a big favourite. Yep, we are. He needs a four and a four only on the river. We lose a player. We're heads up. Seven fours a fold. Um, you know, he's got about 13 big blinds, 14 big blinds, so. It will be a bit of a show fest. King seven, I'm just going to rip. Don't want to see a flop with it as such. Just want to pick up the blinds. Or if he calls, like I say, we can still be ahead of us. Sounds like Jack Queen. Jack six, I cannot call. King four is pretty close. Maybe this is a fold. Um. But when I see a king heads up for this amount of binds, I'm going to ship it. He actually calls with a worse hand, but hits. Need a king on the river, which we do not hit. That is sad. That is very sad indeed. King 9 will not be a fold. It will just be like a 3 bet jam or a call off. But he does opt to fold. Stacks is pretty even. You know, he's a slight favourite. Yeah, just try a min ray steal here. He snap folds, which is nice. A lot of this is just adapting per hand, per stack size. So the ranges we give um, will definitely, you know, shift when your know, head's up, three-handed, short-stacked, but we'll definitely get a shove off fold range. Going to min-raise call off ace-10. He sadly checks. We flop a good shot on a backdoor draw. Um, I think it's probably best to check on a board like this and then call a lot of turns. This turn obviously very good for us, develops a draw. He checks, I'm just going to bet. He min-raises, which is pretty odd. Um... He might be bluffing, but, you know, we beat the bluff, so I'm just going to call and take my price with the straight draw and first draw. We actually hit an 8 there, so whatever he was repping on the turn doesn't seem to make much sense now. I hope he doesn't have a straight, but we do block that. I believe ace-10 is going to be the best hand a lot of the time here, so I'm just going to check back. And yeah, he just has king-5. Pretty random. Don't think that's a good board. Ace-4 is going to be an all-in. I'm going to jam or I'm going to call. Once he min-raises, I'm just going to ship. He snaps me off with... A king and a seven. If I was him, I would have just shoved that pre. Nice that he's drawing dead there. And we take this down for two euros. And yes, we absolutely will play another. And here she is. So yeah, that one went well. Um, I don't think we made any clear mistakes. We got called by worse hands. We got value from worse hands. And it all went well. Come on, let's spin a good one. Ah, oh, got a worm. Another double. Maybe part one's going to be the nightmare double. I'm sure some of you guys have already have signed up and be playing this now. Very soft, very fun. We will be playing higher stakes throughout the uh, series. And like I say, the main thing here is to learn together, just play the game, show them off, and have some fun. going to go ahead and just try min-raising blind versus blind here. And I will not be folding. Ace-Jack is just such a monster. Uh, Three-handed for 25 bigs in a winner-takes-all format. Always think about that. This is not like a regular Hold'em game. Like Ace Jack, just, you know, the value is through the roof. Um, you know, it's shorter handed. It's winner takes all. It's 25 big blinds. You know, it is a hand we probably should be getting the money in with pre flop in some sort of way. Seems that the play here is a lot tighter. Um, I have definitely dabbled in, um, Pog Star Spin and Goes, um, Twisters, uh, over on iPoker and Jackpots over on ACR. These games definitely seem to be a lot tighter. Gonna uh, three bet rip this. Oh, he limps. It's a pretty interesting spot. I think we just go jam because we assume he'd raise all of his strong hands and he's just gonna fold a lot. So we just win a sizable pot. He actually calls with king 10. So that's pretty good for us. Um, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't you do it. Nice. Um, really don't like his line at all. Really don't like his line at all, but works out well for us. I feel like I'm getting a good um, grasp of these games. Think I can definitely be an overall winner, even without knowing all the correct theory instantly. But that just goes to show how soft these these games will be on a site where you know 
maybe the software isn't as smooth or maybe you can't mass table as much as somewhere like Pokestars. It's a pretty huge jam here. It's pretty close. You know, 21 big blinds. I think King Knight suited heads up is a call. It is pretty close. And yeah, he shows Jack 5. Um, so we need to avoid a Jack or a 5 on the river and we win it all. Nice. Yeah, that's a terrible jam. Um, wow, this is, this is a money machine. This is just a complete money machine. Um, even though we're only getting doubles, like, you've got to remember that the standard is the standard. Whether you're playing for, you know, one euro or like a thousand, these guys really are not very good. Um, I'm just gonna play these. You know, there's 50 euro ones, you know. I might move away from cash games. Let's spin again. Let's have a, let's have more than a double. Ah, fuck off, worm. The goddamn worm. We need the castles. Um, on the first day these were released, which was only like two days ago, um, the 13, a uh, 13,000 euro one, uh, dropped. I believe it was a 10 euro buy in, so that's pretty sick. All in very first hand for 25 big blinds from Borboletta. I imagine his range is like, you know, ace nine suited, hands like that, and like, you know, small pairs, deuces three to eights. King Jack, I'm just gonna mint. I will not call it off if someone jams. Queen Queen 7, probably just gonna check this back against two opponents on a flush board. I think there's just too many hands that can be had. He actually leads pot, which is nice to see because leading pot here with anything is incorrect. Um, so if I had a queen, if I had a flush draw, if I had a seven, you know, I can just play perfectly against him. He actually gets peeled, which is crazy as well. Maybe he's just trapping with a queen or better. Um, cause flush draw, yeah, yeah, he's got a queen. Okay. I imagine he's got a queen. Nope, he's got a flush draw and this guy's got a seven. Oh my god, I thought he played a queen perfectly, but he'd actually just played a 9 high flush draw terribly. Gonna just rip it with the a6. This guy just might call off really light, or just go ahead and fall. He does call, and he has 7-9 off. Uh, suit it, sorry. Ah, uh, Sai. We need an ace or a 6, we miss. He wins that one, but I think we played well, and I don't think they played well at all. So that is pretty awesome. I would much rather jam a 7-9 suited than limp call off 25 big blinds. Yeah. Look at these little fish. Look at these little fish. I love this. I love these games. I'm so excited about them. Oh, oh, we've got a triple. We've got a triple. That's good. At least we're moving up. At least the more you play, obviously, the more shots you're going to get at winning larger jackpots. All in very first hand. I like it. What is SSS25 going to do? He calls. King Jack versus King 8. That is quite something. Guys, get signed up. Get in these play pools before good players figure this out. I'm gonna just peel it with my 9 10 suited. Very floppable hand. Flop a gut shot, no backdoor draws. This is just gonna be a fold. Not the gut shot we want to aim for. King 8, we're gonna try and min raise. Let's see what happens. We really don't know much about this guy. We just know that he raised called off with King Jack. Could mean anything. Interesting that he leads on a queen 3-3. Three, three. I think I'm going to float here because I think he's just going to lead flops like this a lot and, you know, basically give up on a lot of turns. He bets again and he pots it. So I take everything back I said. I thought he was, like, playing well and sort of, you know, like, understanding that I'm just going to miss these flops a lot. Um, maybe he's playing super well, but I don't think with a pot size well you can say that because he would just be committing himself in, like, a really horrible way. So I have no idea what he had there. Like, that is just confusing. But he didn't let me uh, do anything, so good for him. 5-6 is just going to be a peel of him in Razor or a fall preflop. He's 5xing it. This guy is all over the place. And I feel like I've improved even after these first five. Like, maybe the first one in this video series, I didn't play great. But now we're playing better. Easy jam here uh, for 17 and a half big blinds with Queen Jack off. He's called me with 9-10. We need a 10 or a Queen. Sadly, we miss and we lose that one. But again, we played great. We got it in good. All we can do. We load up another. All these videos are going to be 30 minutes long. Hopefully, we can get about 5 to 10 in each one. If I was watching these videos, I would literally be like, I've got to play these things. So I'm really glad that they've produced a good game. Oh, the fucking worm. God damn you, worm. When you, when you see that worm drop, you just know it's game over. It's just game over. The worm's there. We need castles. We need the... Well... I call them castles, like the fish bowls, the fish tanks, whatever it is. I think it's a castle. But hey, we're plotting... Okay, that's an interesting one. Just ships the 9, 9, 10 flop. Okay. Cool. Maybe he just has that, like, 7, 8 and doesn't care. Who knows? King Deuce. 
is going to be a check. I'm happy with that. And it's going to be a fold on this flop. Down it goes. Down it goes. Ace King, obviously a monster. Just going to start by min raising. Hoping to just get all the money in. Hoping he raises or jams. You know, whatever. He folds. That sucks. <laughs> you know, anything but a fold is a great situation there for us. Ace five. Going to just try a min raise. Pretty close here. Maybe this should be a jam pre flop. Not hundred percent sure. Min raise gets through anyway. Just because it's a very vulnerable hand. You know, basically it's a paypal slop. I think three bet jamming is a must in this spot, by the way. Um, or if someone limps, it's a jam as well. Yeah. I think this is definitely a jam from what I've seen them play. And there's money in the middle. We have an ace. Like, let's go. He calls with ace four. Nice. So no four. It's probably going to be a chop. It is, unless a four or five comes. Chop it up. If I was him, I would raise pre flop with that hand. I would not be limping. Queen Deuce is going to be a fold, even though we get a good price to limp, someone can raise behind. And just the fact our hand would not flop that well overall is an obvious uh, thing. Three seven suited. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Been open a lot of suited hands. These guys seem maybe a bit looser, but we'll try them in raise. We're just going to dabble. You know, we are literally putting our toes into the water. We're just testing it. We're, we're seeing what's happening. Is it going to prove positive or negative? That's on our friend Yoko to, to understand. He calls. That's interesting. We flop a straight draw, but it's a pretty bad board because he could connect. But I feel betting is always going to be better than checking. And we do betting and we take it down. Imagine he just had a hand like King 4 or something like that. Queen fives a fold versus a limp and a min raise. Quick call there, and we see a ace four five with two clubs. 106 in the middle, 350 back effective. Best less than half pot there, and gets a quick fold. Eight three suited. I think it's going to be a limp. And a check, and on this board we're just going to go ahead and start betting. Don't want to just bet the minimum, you know, bet slightly above. Um, he calls pretty quick. Queen on the turn, pretty interesting. Um, I would have bet a lot of turn cards there. But because we have hit a flush draw, I think we need to bet again. Like, it's kind of one of those turns I want to slow down with, because now I just don't think he's going to fall lots of two pairs. However, I do think if he's got like 9, 10, um, he's going to start folding. And he actually just folds a 6 there, which is pretty awesome for us. I didn't think a 6 would always fold. That's for sure. That is for sure. But you know, I don't want to check fold, I don't want to check call, I don't want to check raise. So I feel like just betting out into our flush draws better because there are hands he can certainly fold. And now we've seen him fold that hand, and that's awesome. We can just exploit. King four. It's a shame we folded. Would have flopped top pair. <sighs> These pot size bets are wild. They really are silly. <laughs> you just risk too much when you're bluffing, or you just lose action when you're not. Going to be just a all in here with the ace eight. If he jams, I'll call. If he raises, I jam. If he limps, I jam. I'm just going to get all the money in. And um, he calls. I mean, whatever. Let's go. He can definitely call it worse. He can fold hands with equity because any hand has equity here. You know, nine three suited has equity, and if he folds that, then that's a win. Ten four. We're going to fold. Again, it is very tempting to always call there. But, you know, think about the value of your hand. Think about there's a playback to act behind. Think about the blinds. Think about the stack sizes. Think about, you know, preserving stacks. Um, gets a call here by Queen 9. I mean, Queen 9 suited there just a very easy jam on the button for like 13 bigs. All he's done is just allowed somebody to jam. And yes, you know, like the, the thing is, if he did jam, he would have ran into Ace 9. But what about this time the guy just has like King 8 and folds? Like, you've got to remember that. You know, it's the fact that he can fold hands that you beat as well. And it just puts him to the decision. Get him the 5-6. Fold to the jam. 20 big blinds, guys. So, you know, it's not like all-in or fold territory. We can definitely try some limping and min raising. Queen-8 suited will be an all-in. Um, even though he's limped, like, we can still jam Queen-8 profit profitably here. He snaps me off, which is worrying. But hey, we're flipping. We need a Queen-8, a 6, or a 4. 
<laughs> Sadly, he makes the double full house, and that is the end of the video. Um, I gotta say, I, I loved it. I love those games, you know. Um, that's how to play Stan James uh, Fish Parties. There is lots of money, guys. Like, look at all of this money. It's just to be won. You can see this guy, Darcy Dog, won the 13k. Someone's already won 8k. You know, this is real money being won for, like, super low buy-ins. 5k's. Just people are absolutely rinsing this, man. You know, yes, we got some doubles. Yes, we got some triples. But the jackpots are real. They are legit. They're dropping. And guess what? You're playing some of the worst players on Earth. Um... Get signed up, get involved, play, and comment below. Uh, this was John for PokerVIP.com, and this was How to Play Stan James Fish Pies. Good luck at the tables.